Hello and welcome to this Lightroom editing tutorial. Today I'm gonna take this rather boring and average picture of this chatbird and I'm gonna turn it into a photo like this while explaining to you every single step I do from the start to finish. So unsurprisingly this was shot at the zoo, actually quite close. I shot this at 300mm but I think I was just a few meters away from the chapel to get such a close up and I like the general crop and composition of the picture but as you can see there are fences, there was a fence right in front of his eye and that kind of makes this whole area a little bit soft and I mean it's not ideal but I really think I can make a great picture out of it. So because we have this fence line right here and and also up here. I think I'm going to go with black and white. It also complements the mood that I'm going for, the very dramatic look, and it makes this whole blurred out fence over his face way less obvious. I really really love his expression, his look, and I think the framing was pretty good too, just a little bit of his ear and not too much of the mouth. I really just think the eye is the main attraction in this photo. So let's get finally started with editing. First thing I'm gonna do is raise the shadow, which really doesn't have that big of an impact, but I really like to do that, especially in my black and white pictures, so I have a lot of room to work with. Then I'm also gonna bring down the highlights. I'm not gonna go too far here, just because there are not many prominent or really bright highlights but just bringing that down so I can trace the whites even more is definitely a good thing. Whites, you can hold down the Alt key and bring the slider to the right. And as soon as you get something else than black in your picture, that means that area is clipped. Now, usually uh, you wanna make sure that there's nothing clipped. It really doesn't matter that much if there's like one pixel but you just want to make sure that you don't go too far, you know, something like this is definitely not what you want. And in my general landscape pictures, I like to bring it to the edge of just stopping before anything gets clipped. But for this photo, I really don't want to make it super dynamic, you know, I really want to keep this very dark and moody mood, so to say. So I think I'm just going to leave it there, even though I could go further. And blacks, definitely going to bring down the blacks. This is also a very important reason why I brought up the shadow so much at the start is so I can bring down the blacks even more and if you see here if I bring down the shadows from a hundred to zero you see the whole picture is kind of too dark especially considering the fact that I'm gonna add some contrast here as well contrast don't be afraid to go minus contrast can work sometimes but in my general black and white pictures, especially if you go for a very dramatic black and white picture, I would definitely suggest you to go into the plus contrast if you're gonna adjust that slider. Then let's go down here to the clarity. Clarity is pretty much the same. You know, don't be afraid to go minus clarity, but for the very dramatic black and white pictures, it often looks better to go plus. So I think we're pretty much done with the basic adjustment. Let me go to the color temperature and believe it or not, even in black and white pictures, this color temperature will have a little bit of an impact to your photo. Really not that big of a deal unless you go to the extremes, but you know, why not play around with it? Just takes 10 seconds. So I think we have a pretty good starting point from the basic adjustments. Then let's go down here to the tonal curve, which is definitely my second favorite tool. First thing I'm gonna do here is bring up the highlights. And this is definitely a great thing that I usually do with all of my pictures. And uh, the highlight slider down here really has a very different effect than the highlight slider up there. This one just kind of affects the general bright parts, while this one down here in the tonal curve just affects the very bright parts of your picture. So pay close attention to this area on his face right here, 
as I bring up the highlights and you see it's just getting a little bit more alive a little bit more interesting so just go with whatever value works best there and the other sliders I don't really have a set tactic with them I just kind of see whatever works best and I think bringing up the lights just a little bit creates even more dynamic then let's go to the other sliders here and it's really difficult sometimes but I think I'm gonna go minus here even though it doesn't really do that much and shadows is just like the highlight slider it really just affects the very very dark parts of your shadows so let me just finish up the tonal curve and I think that looks pretty good and actually a last thing here is point curve this is a thing that I often leave out with my landscape pictures but if if you have a situation with very fine contrast such as this picture right here I think it is worth to at least try out but I think all of these settings other than linear even medium is already a little bit too much yeah I don't think I'm gonna go with medium I think I like linear a little bit better it's just too much so let's see before the tonal curve adjustments and here's after it's really not that big of a difference but you know it's really depending on your picture sometimes it just has a very solid impact like this one and sometimes it has a very very big impact and really can change dramatically the way your picture looks the HSL tool black and white not really gonna play around with this even though you could but I really don't think it has a very big impact at all so don't gonna play around with this in this photo split toning down here here you can add color in your highlights or shadows respectively even in your black and white pictures and I often like to just go into the highlights and at least just see if I want to add some color there in some of my pictures I like to add a little bit of orange in the highlights in some of my black and white pictures and I mean hmm it kind of works I think but at the end I think just having it uh, pure black and white works even a little bit better so I'm actually not gonna do anything here but you know a very simple tool that is worth to see if you want to add anything there but in this case not gonna do anything in the split toning then detail is a very very important tool especially if you're gonna print your picture and you want the best possible look if you're just uploading it to Facebook or Instagram it probably won't matter that much but uh, if you want the maximum quality definitely a thing you want to pay attention to and of course zoom in one to one so you actually see what you're doing and you see there's a lot of hair and I definitely want to add some sharpening here now I shot this with a Tamron 70 to 300 lens which is a relatively inexpensive not really a super sharp lens but even if you have a really high quality expensive lens, adding some sharpening can really get the maximum out of your picture. So you just don't want to overdo it, otherwise it, you know, it will take away all of its natural look. But I think I'm gonna go with around 50 here. I rarely go above 70 with my sharpening but I think 50 works the best here then I'm gonna zoom back out again hold down the alt key and bring the masking slider to the right until none of this non-textured surface is selected you just want to make sure that your sharpening mask really just sharpens anything that you want to be sharpened otherwise you really just introduce unnecessary noise then a thing that I've just recently discovered is the color reduction slider here uh, which reduces color noise I didn't cover this slider since it's color noise and you don't really see it in black and white but I found out that if you bring the color noise reduction slider to the right it will even make your black and white picture look more clean even though it's really just taken out the green and purple sensor spots so even though it's black and white it actually does do a little bit of a difference and makes your picture look a little bit better so I think that looks pretty good here last tool would be noise reduction and 
really don't like noise reduction, especially in your black and white pictures. I really have my threshold for noise even higher in black and white pictures than I have in color photos. And as you see here, there's really so little noise. Definitely don't want to add any noise reduction. Otherwise, you will just get rid of so much detail. And that's really not a thing that you want to do unless you absolutely have to. And this picture is definitely not necessary. So I'm going to zoom out again. Then let's go down here to the lens corrections and just do my one basic thing here for black and white pictures. Just go to enable profile correction and it will get rid of the distortion of your lens but it will also get rid of the vignetting. Now vignetting is a thing that a lot of people complain and look at when they buy lenses but I really don't mind vignetting. Actually in a lot of the cases when the re vignetting is removed I go back to the vignetting tool down here and just go down with it so it really just affects the distortion because I really really like vignetting actually and I think it works for quite a lot of the pictures. And speaking of vignetting, let's go down here to the effects and here you can add additional vignetting. Do not go into the plus vignetting, really I don't think it works for any pictures I've ever edited. But going into the minus can sometimes really really work to give your picture even more attention towards the center and really, you know, strengthen the mood of the photo. Now this is definitely completely optional, but I like to at least try it out. And in this photo, even though I like vignetting, you know, uh, a little bit of vignetting from the actual lens, I don't think I'm gonna add any additional vignetting just because I think I'd rather do that with the graduated filter or the adjustment brush a little bit later once we're done with the global adjustments. So I'm actually just going to reset that and go on. Let's go down to the camera calibration rider. And as you can see here, you have profiles. Now these profiles cr pretty much change the color and the a sort of contrast ratio, how bright stuff is. It can be a very big impact in your color pictures and in the black and white pictures is it's a little bit less but it still can have an impact so i would just suggest you to to go through all of these profiles and at the end stick with whatever you like best and i actually think camera standard works really well here compared to adobe standard which is what we started with and camera standard yeah, I really like this nose getting a little bit brighter. And the last thing down here would be the primary color sliders. You might think, well, that's color sliders. They are nothing to do with black and white. But I actually do have an impact in your black and white pictures. However, it's really a very small impact most of the times. So I'm just not gonna cover them and not gonna do anything here. But if you would like to play around with them yourself, just go with whatever looks best. Really no set tactic that I have here. So I really just wanna keep this video kind of short and kind of as snappy as possible. So we are finally done with the global adjustments. So now is the local adjustments time, which really is the most fun. As you can see here, we have a very, very distinctive lighting scheme from the light coming from the right shining on him. And you see that from all of its highlights and from the shadows in the background, even though Though we don't have the direct light source in the frame but I think I really just want to exaggerate that a bit so I'm gonna grab a graduated filter reset everything and just drag a graduated filter in the direction of the lighting you know the lighting is probably coming from somewhere over here in the top right corner so I'm just gonna drag one over there and make a very very soft edge and then just introduce some plus exposure. And I really just want to exaggerate that lighting scheme and create more interest. Now you be, gotta be careful not to overdo it, but a little bit works pretty well here. Let me grab another one, this time a pretty small one just for the very top right and introduce even more plus exposure. 
So I actually just noticed that I have two uh, graduated filters with minus exposure in the bottom left corner and that is because I've edited the picture before. I really thought I reset all of the adjustments but I obviously forgot something so that's uh, sorry for that really my bad. And as you can see as I remove them the whole picture becomes a lot more even and a lot more boring. So I'm actually just gonna undo these adjustments and gonna bring back those two graduated filters and pretty much what I've done here is just drag one over the bottom left and really went down uh, with the minus exposure quite far to really get a sense, you know, from the left to very dark, going to medium, going to very bright where the light is coming from. And then I've added another one, a really small one, just for the very, very bottom left corner. And I've introduced even more plus contrast and even lowered the exposure even more. So once again, really apologize for forgetting these two filters. But you see what crazy effect these two filters have if I delete them, um, really becomes a totally different picture. So you really just want to make sure that you think with the lighting. If the lighting comes from the top right, you really just want to exaggerate that and really dramatize your picture while still keeping it looking sort of natural and realistic. And actually, I think I'm really done after these graduated filters. Um, maybe there's a little bit too much exposure on his nose. So I'm just gonna dial down the highlight slider in the tonal curve. Remember, highlight slider down here really just affect the very bright parts of your photo. So from before to going a little bit down, I think that looks pretty, pretty good. So let's as always see the before and after and here is pretty much the raw file. Now as you've seen before I unfortunately forgot to remove these graduated filters. So there are actually two graduated filters in the bottom left corner. So it would just be a little bit more evenly exposed without that. But you know you get the idea everything else is really how the raw file how everything started without any adjustments. Here is it converted to black and white without any adjustments. And here is the finished picture after all of the adjustments. And I really just love this very dramatic look. We really just emphasized the light and made everything look way more dramatic. If you would like to see more Lightroom wildlife editing tutorials, be sure to check out this playlist right here. I have all of my videos about wildlife photography there and I have some other tutorials where I edit pictures both in black and white and in color. If you would like to see more videos just like this one, please be sure to subscribe. I make one photography video every single day of the week. And if you've liked the video and you enjoyed it, please give me a thumbs up and if you did not enjoy it, please give me a thumbs down. That really helps me to see what kind of videos you like and really helps to improve my videos in the future. So if you've made it this far, thank you very much for that. I really do appreciate it. I hope you have a great day. I really hope you could take away some tips and techniques from this video to use in your own editing. Last but not leastly, I want to wish you a great day and please take care.